Oh my goodness. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is there for you. I am happy tacked and my gosh, we have finally started. <laughs> We're about an hour and a half late. A tiny, tiny portion of that was because I had to run unexpected errands this morning after I got out of the pool. Um, and the rest of it was because I couldn't get Scarlet Hollow to start. Um, so we got it started now. I had to go into Steam, verify the game cache, and 122 files were not validated. So I had to fix that and then start the game again. But we got it now. Everything should be working. We should be good to go. Ready to go. And um, yeah. <laughs> Today we're back in episode 3 for our Mean Girls, Mean Scarlet Girls challenge, community challenge. So we're back. We're coming in, and goodness gracious, I'm gonna have to put on my voice, and uh, we're gonna make sure that we're we're all here, we're all accounted for, and um, yeah, I thought the uh, the long pole here was going to be that the guy in the lane next to me this morning at the pool was showing off to the girls on the other side of his lane, and my bag got completely soaked. Um, because he was doing really aggressive flip turns or something. So even though my bag was like over six feet from the pool deck edge, it got completely soaked. So I had to lay out everything in my kit, do all of that. Um, but no, it was instead that I couldn't get Scarlet Hollow up and running. Um, but we have it now. We're here. And it is time to go. So let me pull up the chat, make sure that we got everything. Make sure we got everything. So if you already said hi and I haven't said hi back, it's because I didn't have chat up while we were doing that, but we should have it now. So let's get going. Let's get going. We are going to load something. <laughs> so which one is this? Oh no, I need to figure out. Tuesday end. Okay, yeah, we didn't do Wednesday. We didn't do Wednesday, so that makes sense. Tuesday end should be right. So let's go on that one. And we're gonna check the book. Yep, there it is. Monday, major decisions. We refused boiled peanuts when they were offered. We found an opossum living in the dresser. Narrowly escaped danger in the woods. Met Stella's friend Kanika and her mother, Sybil, and learned about ditchlings, crashed at Stella's, and called Tabby before going to sleep. And again, reminder that this is our Mean Girls run, so we have to be hot. And we also have to be powerful so we can choose violence whenever possible. So we've got the, um, we've got all of the rules up in the top corner. You can take a look at those. Um, we're going to be picking the most fetch options, and I'm going to be saying lots of things about my voice. Uh, Monday major decisions? What about Tuesday major decisions? Okay, well, let's take a recap. Let's take a recap. Just of episode two. From now on, you're back at the estate by bedtime. No more impromptu sleepovers. When I can fix you some of Settle's new blend, maybe it'll calm you down a bit. I think you'll like today's mix. It's chaga and lemon balm. Should help ease your stress and tension. And if you feel like talking, I'll... Oh, that's Avery. I <laughs> gotta start reading. Um, if you feel like talking, I'll be all ears. I see you're a private person. I can respect that. You never know how someone might respond to hearing the truth of what you encountered last night. Have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts. And I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. Hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out? Nothing strenuous, we promise. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now, anyway. <laughs> it's a little later in the morning, so it's harder for me to get in the low register, but we're gonna try it anyway. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Oh, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Gotta really relax the throat there. Interrupted by a sudden movement in the corner of my eye. 
A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse that killed over a hundred people. And then we were in the mines. My dad's a foreman at the continuous mining facility and he says they only abandoned this mine because there wasn't enough coal left. So it's actually really safe and we can hang out here whenever we want. My dad says our house is haunted. Kanik is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. Oh no, where'd the three of them run off to? There's something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it. But you can feel it in your chest, like a deep growl of a predator. Hey, are you alright, Happy? Stella reaches for my shoulder, but not before the light from my phone illuminates the chamber. Happy, Happy, are you alright? Well, wait, Beck and Alexis are still down there. You can't just leave them here. I know which way they were going. They'll listen to you this time, I promise. And then we cut our losses. <laughs> Sorry, Becca and Alexis. Had to do it to them. <laughs> oh, children. Tabitha doesn't say a word to me as the car cuts along the darkened road. So pretty much in this run, we're really hot and really powerful, but everybody hates us. <laughs> I can't help it that everybody hates me. I'm just so popular. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, my head empty of thoughts. After my time in the Shaw Mine, I barely even notice the dust. When I close my eyes, though, my thoughts drift to Alexis and Becca, terrified and alone, if not already dead. Time to wake up. Sunshine filters in through the dusty windows of the estate as your eyes flip open. You manage to survive a second night in the town of Scarlet Hollow. As you pull yourself out of bed, you can feel the soot and grime of the shaw mine still stuck to your skin. Ugh, we need to take a shower. You step into the guest bathroom and into the shower. The water's hot and surprisingly enough clean. As steam fills my lungs and soot washes down the drain, I... Powerful build and hot. My mind is a blank slate. I think about nothing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> think about someone special. Hmm. Let's channel, uh... Let's channel Karen a little bit. My mind is a blank slate. Think about nothing and finish my shower. We're done here. I turn off the faucet and dry myself off. Time to start my day. Well, you know, we gotta text everyone. Last night was terrible. Let's text Stella. <laughs> we do have to we do have to flirt whenever possible. So <laughs> thinking about you. And thinking about Kanika. <laughs> we have to flirt whenever possible. Sorry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No. Name Kanika relationship is not defined. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kanika relationship is not defined. <laughs> dot exe. There's some code for you. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh dear. All right, let's look out the window, just for funsies. Fondly thinking about the pleasant view it provided me on Monday. It's the same view. Um, oh, there's nothing to skip here. Where? What is it? Uh, H. I'm trying to see if I see Wayne. Cause like Wayne is like hidden in a lot of these background images. And I think in some of them, like he's like right here, but I don't see him. Maybe it's cause we don't have keen eye. I don't know. Back to the guest room. We're not checking in on Dustin, sorry. A person. You enter to find the kitchen. You enter to find the kitchen. You enter the kitchen to find your cousin in the midst of devouring a pint of banana chocolate chunk. She isn't alone. Frufru glares at you from her usual spot on the counter as a red-headed woman busies herself trying to tidy as best she can. Tabitha's gaze swivels from the woman to you, her glare intensifying. Um, hello? <laughs> Hi, Cavs. How are you? Um, we have found the kitchen. We have indeed found the kitchen. As you can see, it is pristine. This kitchen is so clean. It is the cleanest kitchen that you've ever experienced in your life. Um, good morning. I'm Janie. Just here to do my weekly little cleaning. Whatever cleaning Miss Tabitha will let me do, at least. I could have this place looking brand new, you know. Don't go making any big renovations or moving anything around. I like knowing where my stuff is. Okie dokie. It's so nice to finally meet you, Happy. I mean, I guess I did meet you on Monday when you popped into the diner. There's a worrying amount of flowers in the kitchen. Um, so the reason that we're here is because we're going to a funeral at the end of the week. So yes, um, <laughs> If you've never heard of or played Scarlet Hollow before, this is a horror game, horror choose your own adventure game, and made by Black Tabby Games, and it is great. Uh, so the premise is, we're from out of town, our mom has died recently, and our cousin, whom, we, whom we've never met, Tabitha, over there in the corner, her mom just died. Um, so we're back in town for the, for the funeral, and a lot of spooky hijinks are coming up. So I, yes, horror game, very, very upsetting, but um, I'm not personally a horror person. And I actually really like this game because it doesn't really have a lot of gore. It doesn't have a lot of jump scares. Um, it's, it's really all about like building a world and building tension and then just generally being spooky existential horror type stuff. And hi, Slowpoke, how are you? Thank you for, <laughs> thank you for chatting with me on Twitter right before this. Um, you go, Glen Coco. Um, but yeah, we're having a good one. We're having a good one, and um, yeah, we're just getting back into Scarlet Hollow. Janie, the rules for this, this was a community challenge that we're, we're doing, um, is to play this game uh, in the Mean Girls way. So I had to pick Powerful and Hot as my traits, um, which changed some of the options that we get. And every time, <laughs> <laughs> hi cake hi cake i love the axe emoji entry i really do um i'm sure they're bouncing all over the screen right now um anyway uh so i have to use hot and uh hot and powerful and i have to be mean or flirt whenever possible and if there is an option to choose violence i have to choose violence so those are the rules, which makes for a very different gameplay experience than my other runs of this game, because I'm not that person, so I usually don't pick those options. Um, but yeah, we're, we're doing what we can to, uh, <laughs> to be mean, I guess. Um, but seeing someone somewhere and meeting them face to face are two completely different things, I suppose.
I... All I'm trying to say is that it's wonderful to finally actually meet you, and I'm so happy part of the family is here to keep Miss Tabitha, what with everything that's... Janie, finally your Pokemon trainer personality comes to use. I'm a fun Pokemon trainer. It's just a lot of bad things happened in Pokemon Daybreak the other day, and then and then we we died in the Emerald Randomizer. <laughs> so, I I I'm not a mean trainer. Cake, cake. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Tabitha. Am I being too much again? Tabitha grumbles in acknowledgement. Oh, are we having ice cream for breakfast? I'll have no sass from you today. Two kids were buried in a mine collapse on my property. So I'm under a lot of stress right now, in case you hadn't put that together. And there is no we here. This stuff is way too hard to get a hold of for me to share. Tabitha takes one last spoonful of ice cream and then discards the empty container, turning to you with her trademark scowl. Let's get going. I've got an errand to run in town, and every time I've left you here alone, something terrible's wound up happening, so you're coming with me. I don't need a babysitter. Yes, you do. You and Stella both do, honestly. <laughs> Not a bad trainer, just a mass murderer that likes to dodge. No, I don't. I don't. That's all Kangaskhan's fault, anyway. Although, I guess I take responsibility for the, the screw-up with A.A. Ron in Pokemon Daybreak. So, I guess apologies there. <laughs> Janie, lock up when you leave, please, and don't go rearranging anything. I'll know. As you're ready to leave, Janie approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabitha remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her foot. Oh, Happy, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I mean, I heard about it before Miss Tabitha mentioned it just now, and then I heard it again. I just wanted to say that I'm so sorry you got caught up in that. I'll be praying for those kids. I can't imagine how scared they must be. So let's see. Tabitha's foot tapping is driving me insane. Bye. It's perfectly reasonable for me to be impatient right now. Alrighty then. Be safe out there, you two. Poor Prince A. A. Run. His son will have vengeance. Get in the car. The ride to town is uneventful. My cousin's surprisingly more focused on the road than making conversation. Or unsurprisingly, I should say. Alright, we're just popping into the general store for a few minutes. What are we doing at the general store? Picking up tea from Sybil. You roll your eyes. Roll your eyes all you want. See if I care. None of those were mean. So we were silent. You and Tabitha turn as the door to the general store bursts open. A flustered Kanika exits, shouting behind her. Fine. Okay, keep coddling him. Keep letting him get away with stuff you never would have let me so much as think about. I'm sick of carrying this family. Kanika storms off. Slowly, the door drifts shut behind her. Ugh, other people in their drama. If more people kept things to themselves, they'd be a lot happier. <laughs> True strength. True strength comes from being able to crush your emotions into a tiny ball. <laughs> yeah. Can't get stronger if you don't fight. Let's see. Have I ever told you that you scare me? Uh, 
I, none of these are like a really good option for the challenge, but we'll we'll pick this one because it's powerful build. Yeah, true strength comes from being able to crush your emotions into a tiny ball. Exactly. But we're burning daylight. Come on already. Let's go. The bells at the general store chime as you cross the threshold. The smell of old wood and steamy herbal tea flood your senses, making you feel instantly at home. Good morning, you two. Hope you're doing well after last night's activities. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. Happy, if you'd like to keep Miles company, Tabitha and I will be just a minute. <laughs> so take those feelings, put them in the box, and then crush it! <laughs> Anybody uh, seen Book of Mormon? When you take those feelings and put them in a box, then crush that box into a tiny piece and then crush it. Yes, all of the axes. All of the axes. Sounds like your daughter's pretty mad at you, Sybil. She just needs a little time to cool down. Yesterday was a bit much for her, so I'm giving her some space. All right. <laughs> Need to see it. At least listen to the, the soundtrack for it. I think you'll appreciate it, Slow. Okie dokie. Well, what else would we do but try and listen in? We don't have the traits to do it, so we have to do right next to the door. <laughs> you walk up to the door of the tea room and listen in. Subtle. Aye, longer than you'd hope, but... <laughs> they moved to the other side of the tea room, so I can't hear them. Okay. Fine. Fine. I don't have keen eye or whatever this this round, so I can't, I can't, or street smart, whichever trait it was that allowed me to actually listen to their conversation. We got that on the first play. Two patrons. I gotta stop talking. I love Duke's theme. Well. You've never seen the man beside Duke before, but whoever he is, he's big. If it ain't happy, Bo, this is Miss Scarlet's cousin. She was there with Stella the night in the woods. It's a pleasure to meet you, miss. My name's Bo. I'm Duke's boy. Hope you've been faring better since all that unpleasantness. <laughs> Things have gotten worse. <laughs> I hate being mean to Duke, because he's actually like a really nice guy, <laughs> but we gotta do it. If I'm being honest, I'd almost forgotten you existed, Duke. Is that how folks greet one another in Townsville? Remember, remind me never to visit. I'd say it was a pleasure running into you if you didn't just insult me to my face. Me and the boy had best get on with our shopping. Can't spend too long away from the farm with those little devils running around. Can't leave Mama all by herself up there for very long. You have a good one, I guess. It's nice meeting you, Happy. And please tell Miss Scarlet I'm sorry about her mama. I feel so bad. I like Duke. He's just a genuinely nice person, but I had to do it to him. I had to do it to him. I hate this. I know. I know you guys really appreciate this run, and that's why it was a community challenge, but my god, does it make me very uncomfortable with how I treat people. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and they shuffle off. They're still in the tea room. And here comes all the texts. So remember, if you missed it, we, uh, we texted the group chat with, like, last night was terrible. Doesn't he, though? He's huge. He's a big dude. And Duke is so small, like, what does his mom look like? What are they feeding this boy? What are they feeding him? Um, and then we texted, thinking about you. <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking about you to Stella. And we texted, uh, and we texted, um, we texted, hey, beautiful, to Kanika. Why am I so good at being mean? I'm not. I really, I'm terrible at being mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my god, I over- hey, I overslept. Still gotta make myself breakfast. Meet at the library after and figure out plan. And then it buzzes again. <laughs> hey again, lol. If you want to come over for breakfast, would honestly love to hang out. And then it buzzes yet again. Somebody was busy this morning. I thought you said you didn't want to flirt. If you want to hang up before the library thing, I'm parked in the abandoned lot by the gas station. It's hard to miss. Plenty of time before dinner at Reese's house. Uh-huh. This is when you can spend quality time with people. Um, so we've already done quality time with uh, Tabitha and with Kanika. So let's do something different. Stella invited us over. Pretty much everyone hates us. So like, I don't think we have very strong uh, relationship points with anybody, but we're gonna go get breakfast at Stella's. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take you long to make your way to Stella's house. <laughs> you take a deep breath and yell at the top of your lungs. Hi, Stella! Your shout's immediately met by the sound of an ex excited Gretchen behind the door. Hey, girl. An exhausted Stella groggily stares at you from her doorway. Hey, sorry, I'm a bit of a mess. I guess I slept in a lot. Give me a minute to finish getting dressed and I can make us some breakfast. Stella talks from the other room as she changes. I like that she just has a big portrait of Gretchen in her kitchen. Oh, wow. And then, uh, it's a pretty neat kitchen. I would organize my kitchen in a similar way if I had such a large kitchen. Pretty nice. Stella talks from the other room as she changes. What are you feeling for breakfast? Pancakes, eggs and biscuits, maybe just a classic scramble? I also have a toaster waffles if that's more your speed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I personally am a pancakes gal, but biscuits, southern biscuits, it's pretty good. I don't want the burden of free will. <laughs> All right, this one sounds, um, I kind of want to do some exploration. So we're going to do some exploration first and then we'll pick a, pick something. Offering biscuits after I've had one of Winnie's? Someone's got a f secret family recipe, huh? I need to learn how to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes me in this game. It's very different from some of my other playthroughs. Um, <laughs> nobody likes me. I'm surprised I got invited over for breakfast, to be honest. It must be because I'm so hot. I'm so hot. So hot right now. <laughs> Maybe. I never said they'd be as good as Winnie's, but I've certainly got a trick or two up my sleeve. You know, this is kind of like a flirty option, so we'll pick this one too. All of those options sound incredible. It's like you know the way to my heart. What can I say? Nourishment is the most important part of cryptid hunting. Okay. Let's see what you've got. Let's do this. Because this sounds the most... Mean girls -y. Biscuits. I love biscuits. <laughs> In-game response. I would say Lego my ego, but since we don't have that copyright, then a frozen toaster waffle is fine. This episode is not sponsored by Eggos. <laughs> uh, I don't suppose a tofu scramble is an option. I know it's a long shot, but I don't eat eggs or dairy. Oh, you're in luck. I think I've got some tofu in the fridge. Kanik has been trying out the whole vegan thing lately, so I've been trying to expand my repertoire. Let's do it together. Maybe you can give me some pointers. I think earlier in episode one, I told her that I would catch water on fire <laughs> so that must not carry over all right cute jumpsuit you look great <laughs> thanks it's because we're going ghost hunting tonight <laughs> This used to be my lucky get up from back when I did ghost hunting videos. 
Though I guess you might call it unlucky, since I've never actually seen a ghost. But hey, after the past couple nights, maybe we could use a bit of bad luck. <laughs> the kind of bad luck we don't find anything, of course. Don't want to jinx us. Should we start on food? You'll have to tell me what to do. Aw, oh, you'll do great, I promise. More than happy to. Alright, I'm just gonna jump right in and start browning the tofu. If you want to chop some extra veggies while I watch the tofu, please feel free. La la la, the trifecta of vegetables. You pick up a knife and get to work. Anyway, I guess we're actually doing work, so oops. Usually we leave the work to everyone else. <laughs> Seems like you got an earlier start than I did today. Anything interesting happened while I was asleep? Did Tabby give you a hard time? And, uh, I don't suppose there's any news from the mines. Tabitha was planning on babysitting me all day, but I gave her the slip. Oh, you could have brought her with you. Though it's probably easier said than done. Especially after what happened last night. I bet she's got a lot on her plate. By the way, how's the sound balance? Is it loud? Is the music loud? I ran into Duke and Bo at the general store this morning. Yeah? How they're doing? Do they have any more run-ins with duck ditchlings? <laughs> we shouldn't know this because we didn't talk to them. Um, we shouldn't know that they're canceling their trip to the state fair because we just immediately insulted Duke to his face and didn't find that out. But oh well. I didn't ask. That's fair. Probably had a lot on your mind. Hmm, I can read minds. We don't have the mystical trait this time, so... It's magical meet read minds. Also, like, look at Gretchen with the big eyes. Look at- look at her face. Look at her face. Alright, let's see. When I talked to Tabitha this morning, it sounded like they'll be digging all week. Best not to think about it. Exactly. There's no way we can know what's going on down there, so there's no reason we should trouble ourselves over it. Just to think it'll all turn out okay instead of stressing, stressing ourselves out more than necessary. Just kind of tamp them back down and focus on the present. We have a mystery to solve. How are you still so positive after everything that's happened? Different people cope in different ways. I know there's nothing I can do about the situation, so I try not to think about it. If I did, I might sink into a pit of despair. The pit of despair. And then I'd just be useless. But if I just tuck it all away, I can be there for people who need me. <laughs> it's easy to mistake that feeling for strength, but it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you um, have a therapist or anything? <laughs> um, let's just tell her she's lying. It's easy to mistake that feeling for strength, but it's a lie. The truly strong fully accept who they are, including their bad feelings. <laughs> Maybe so, but hey, that's for future Stella to worry about. And I'm present Stella. My main concern is making sure we get a good breakfast so we're fueled up for a ghost hunt tonight. Hmm. Yep, we're gonna pick a hot option, of course. Let's get a toast. Yeah, I'm ready, but you'd better stay close in case I get scared. We'll see. These things tend to get pretty chaotic. But hey. If this is anything like any other ghost hunt I've been on, it'll be a much appreciated breather. 
Unless you count Tommy Knockers as ghosts. Or Wayne. I think we're ready for the veggies. Do, do, do. Before I add the final round of seasoning. Thanks for coming over, by the way. It's nice to have company. <laughs> Just Tabitha. <laughs> Let's see. She's so mean to you, I'm so mean to everyone. Why do you keep harassing my cousin? Why do you still bother with Tabitha? She's so mean to you. I don't think that's true. She's distant, sure, and kind of terse, but I think that's just her way of joshing with me. Like the whole band from the mind thing. <laughs> She's so funny. Just Tabitha. Just Tabitha. I don't know. Maybe you should just leave her alone. If everyone backed off when Tabitha acted prickly around them, she'd be entirely cut off from the rest of the world. So, uh, what exactly is your history with my cousin, then? It's complicated. They were girlfriends. <laughs> they were girlfriends. Uh-huh. So, are we, we're actually going to meet Reese today, right? Heck yeah, we are. Dr. Kelly tries to turn us away again, we can just sneak in. Nothing will stand in the way of us and friendship. Are you sure he's real? <laughs> Do you think he's contagious? Nah, whatever he's sick with has gotta just be a Reese thing. His mom isn't sick. And I've seen him a couple times in as many years, and I'm totally fine. I really don't like his mom. She's definitely a little controlling. But I think she means well. Her whole life is taking care of him at this point, you know? What's he like? I'm not about to ruin a cool and mysterious introduction by telling you. I think you'll like him, though. Are you sure he's real? At the very least, he was real for most of my childhood. <laughs> and if he's a ghost now, that's even better. He can tell us what being a ghost is like. Wow. This is the world's longest scramble. You and Kanika seem really close. Yeah, it's nice that she's back in town, but I wish it were under better circumstances. She's so busy with the store, too. I don't know how she does it. It's been nice hanging out with her more in the past couple days. Though again, better circumstances would be nice. Do you ever hang out with Avery? Oh, that's a good question. I guess I just don't know them very well. Oh, that's like a weird response to this as a question. I grew up with Reese and Kanika and Tabby. Even you don't seem like a stranger, what with who you're related to. You just get a plate of ash at this point. This is the world's most burnt scramble. So I guess I wasn't really in the right headspace for making new friends. I do go to their parties, but now that you mention it, it is weird that I haven't thought to try and hang out with them outside of that. I should text them sometime. Alright. How's the food coming? Funny you should ask. Looks like we're done here. <laughs> Just Gretchen's face. <laughs> Gretchen's face is so cute. I don't even, like, pugs are not my favorite breed of dog. Um... But the way they drew Gretchen in this game is so cute. So cute. And with that, breakfast is served. Hopefully I did a good job with the tofu. I made sure to really season it. It's nice to take things a little easy after the past couple days. As you and Stella start to dig in, you're interrupted by a phone alarm. 
Oh shoot, I almost forgot. It's Mayor Jimmy Day. If they're even still doing it after last night. I wonder how far the news has spread. Either way, it's a good excuse to meet up with Oscar and start talking ghosts. Gretchen barks at the mention of Mayor Jimmy. You should let Avery know. Why is meeting the mayor such an exciting event to you? He's just a politician. How charming can he be? You'll see. Let's scarf this down and head on over. I'll make sure to bring some biscuits for the mayor. Southern Hospitality Achievement Unlocked. Spending some quality time with Stella. We've gotten like 65, 67% of the achievements available so far, but yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> We're working on it. You and Stella make your way to the library. It's busier than usual. A small crowd is already formed in the corner of the main foyer. Now we're just waiting on Kanika. Surprised to see you here, Happy. I have expected you to finally skip town. Yes, the whole gang's here. I've been waiting to introduce Happy to the mayor for like the entire time I've known her. It's been two days, three days. It'll be worth it. Trust us. All right, shall we? Get that platinum trophy. We already have a handful that like only three, less than 5% of uh, players have gotten just because of some of the choices that we've made, but I really enjoy how they've made all the achievements in this game. <laughs> Steam completion. I don't think I'm gonna be able to com get completion before they release episode four, which will come with a whole bunch of additional um, achievements. So <laughs> we'll see. They're supposed. I think they're going to be releasing episode four this month, which is why I wanted to get this one done because this is the only run that we have that wasn't ready for episode four yet. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there. He's a dog. <laughs> Mayor Jimmy's a dog. And if we read any books, we might know that he was a dog. You can tell that this dog is the mayor from his little sash and his fancy top hat. There's a regal air about him, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. You haven't met the serious man by his side, but you have to assume that he's the mayor's handler. He holds out his paw as if to shake your hand. He's a dog. He's the mayor. I'm so glad no one ruined the surprise. This town's had a dog as a mayor since the early 1900s. That's just how we do things around here for some reason. He's like the president from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> you know, you're right. I had totally blanked that that was like a thing. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. It's the best part of living in Scarlet Hollow, besides the nature. And all my friends and Winnie's Biscuits. Oh, and the close-knit small-town community, of course. But having a dog mayor's a close fifth. No contest. <laughs> Gretchen doesn't like Mayor Jimmy, by the way. <laughs> hey, whoa, Gretchen, calm down, old girl. You're gonna pull a muscle. Miss Richmond, I'm gonna have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. I should have known better. These two have never been able to get along. Stella walks off, struggling to hold Gretchen back. Kanik is quick to follow. I love how, like, <laughs> there's just paintings of dogs wearing politician clothes in the background. And, like, the water bowls on the floor back there. Here, let's, let's just take a look at, appreciate this office that this dog has. What does he do for the rest of the time? Does somebody just like hang out with him in this room all the time? What? Okay. We don't know. Looks like everyone else is already talking to Oscar in the next room. Oh, it's this guy. Before you can catch up to your companions, you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. 
Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor may have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? I'm Pastor Daniel. I take it you're happy. Everyone's been buzzing about you. I'm so sorry about your aunt, but I'm sure she's in a better place now. <laughs> Back up, preacher man. We might pick that one. Let's not kid ourselves. We both know Perlan's in hell. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't that bad. Most people are good deep down inside. It's best not to speak ill of the dead. Alright, we're finally gonna say it. We're finally gonna say it. I've been waiting. Back off, preacher man. I ain't buying what you're selling. Don't worry. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just thought I'd extend the offer in case you needed someone to talk to. The church's doors are open if you ever change your mind. Have a blessed day, Happy. The pastor leaves you be and joins the line to see the mayor. Nothing to do now but catch up with the rest of your companions. Let's go. <laughs> We're looking respectfully. We're looking respectfully, okay? He didn't have to wear that. We're looking respectfully. We, we respect his choices. Mm-hmm. Are you sure we can just, can't just get it over with while the sun's up? I don't know if I can handle getting scared shitless in the dark two nights in a row. Uh, I wish we could, especially since I'm not particularly excited about going back in there after dark either. But I'm pretty sure it only comes out when the sun goes down. <laughs> yes, back off preacher man and looking respectfully, 100%. Yeah, there's no way I'm going in until that spirit's at full power. I want to be sure we get the best evidence possible. This could be my one shot to get real proof of ghosts. I'm not going to waste it just because I'm impatient. Y'all are going to be the death of me. Are you sure there's nothing we can do for Rosalina right now? I don't think so. She's been locked up in the back room all day. Hasn't been very interested in talking to anyone. I think it's best to be the best we can do is stick to the plan. Ghost bust the house, clean, and give her a real bed to sleep in tonight. I just hope it's possible to get rid of this thing. This is a pretty serious ghost infestation? Is that what you call something like this? I believe it's called a haunting, but ghost infestations also sounds good. I suppose we're, we're the ghost hunters, so we can call it whatever we want. Anyway, I'll be bringing all the ghost hunting supplies anyone could ever need. So we should be set on preparations. The only thing y'all need to bring is an open mind. There's a Naruto answer here. We have the power of friendship on our side. It's definitely not something we would say with this characterization. I still don't think ghosts are real. Really? After last night? Even after you told us what you saw in the pit? I'm starting to come around on the idea, and I'm supposed to be the skeptical one. You'll change your mind soon enough. Trust me, this ghost does not mess around. Well, if we're not doing the hunt now, I guess we should head over to Reese's? Absolutely. Come on, Happy. Time to go bother our friend. I'm gonna get back to it. See y'all tonight. Back to what? Are you librarying? Librarian inning, inning, Li librarian ing, like that. <laughs> A Naruto reference? I don't believe it. <laughs> believe it. It was a Naruto reference. Let's do this. So I finally met Pastor Daniel. It was only a matter of time until he tried to pull you aside about grief counseling. When my dad died, I had to ban him from the general store for a week. He wouldn't stop leaving these little pamphlets at, ch at the checkout. I don't know where he finds so many. <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. Vibes are bad. <laughs> You're right. His vibes were bad. Glad you feel the same way. Nothing bonds friends together like hating the same people. 
There's just something about the way he's always smiling. It's so creepy. The man was grinning all through my dad's funeral. I'll never forget that. And I don't mean that in a stigmatizing mental illness kind of way. There's just this little siren that goes off every time I see him that tells me to get away from him. It's exactly how I would describe it too. The whole town feels the same way. Now that I think about it, he must be pretty lonely. We can look for friends somewhere else. Um... <laughs> uh, let's see. Do we want Tabitha to come with us? Let's do let's do a quick poll. I'll I'll take a poll. Um let's do this. Can I do a poll? I can do a poll, right? That's a thing. We're gonna do a poll. We're gonna do a real quick one minute poll for this. Um, whether we're bringing Tabby ghost hunting. So we can either tell the team we're bringing Tabby we're going to invite her secretly, which would probably be the Mean Girls option. Or we're just going to not invite her, which could also be a Mean Girls option. Oh, thank you for, for the hydration reminder. Thank you very much, Cake. Appreciate that. We're going to let the poll run for a sec. Ruminate. And then uh, figure it out. We haven't gotten the achievement for maximum or minimum. Um, ghost hunting compatriots. We would probably only be able to get the minimum one this time because Alexis is still in the mine. <laughs> still in the mine. Oh my goodness. It's opening a whole other thing. Oh. <laughs> All of them got one vote. <laughs> Everything got one vote. The polls, the polls are all the same. <laughs> Uh, okay. Cool. Um, you guys are real helpful. <laughs> um, so everyone said the same thing. What did you contribute channel points for? <laughs> did you contribute channel points so that everything would have one vote? <laughs> Cake! Oh my goodness. Alright. Let's do, um, let's, they all got the same. Um, let's do, uh, secretly. Let's do secretly. <laughs> cake! Stop messing with me, cake. You discreetly shoot your cousin a text inviting her to the an evening's ghost hunt. Stella and Kanika will find out about it if she actually shows up. <laughs> cake! This is like, you know, in Mean Girls when they did like the, the call, the phone call trap, we just did that, but as, as text for ghost hunting. Shall we head out? Let's go. Early dinner at Reese's. We just, we literally just had breakfast like five minutes ago. Time, time's irrelevant. Time is a construct. You once again find yourself in front of Reese's house. A cold hesitation grips you as the building looms over the hilltop. Though it's only early afternoon, it feels much later. The sun's already sinking behind the tall mountains that surround Scarlet Hollow. We're a little early. What if Dr. Kelly yells at us? There's no such thing as early when you're hanging out with friends. That's just extra time you get to spend together. Okay, but what if she yells at us? Reese! Hi, Reese! Too late. The door swings open. Hey! Reese! Oh my god, dude, it's been ages. You must be happy, right? I've heard a lot about you. Stella's been relentless about making sure I got all the happy updates. Gretchen starts yelping at Reese, straining in Stella's grip as she tries to get in between them. She looks very angry. Are they here already? 
I knew you'd show up early, Stella. And you brought the dog. Great. Yeah, I thought you might cheer Reese up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. The dog stays outside. But it's okay, Stella. We can let her chill in my van for a bit. I'll run the AC and leave her some treats. You know I always have some of those easy chew jog dog jerkies she's stashed away. But we go everywhere together. Do you want to come in or not? Kanika nervously tucks Stella away to her van. Well, what about you, Happy? Are you coming in? <laughs> I trust dogs. Why doesn't Gretchen like you, Reese? <laughs> Sure. The house feels cold. Not only is there an odd chill in the air, but the building itself feels too sterile, uncomfortably tidy to the point where you're nervous to touch anything. If it weren't for the aroma of store-bought dinner rolls baking in the oven and the unsettling artwork hanging on the walls, you'd be half convinced you'd wandered into a real estate showing. So, how can I lend a hand? By sitting down at the table and not puttering around my kitchen. I made sure everything was done well in advance, so the only thing left are the dinner rolls, which shouldn't be long. Then we can have a quick dinner and you can leave my house and go on about your business. But I was kind of hoping to see Reese's new art. We still have time now, right? You aren't seriously considering subjecting your friends to your disaster of a room, are you? It's not that bad. You can still see the floor. <laughs> I love that answer. It's like, you can still see the floor. She raises a single questioning eyebrow, much like the rock. I don't mind a little mess. Yeah, I doubt it could be any worse than the way I keep my room. Yeah, okay, fine. As long as you stay out of the kitchen, I don't care what you get up to. Cool. We'll just be downstairs. We won't even know we're here. Make your way down the basement stairs. The basement's what you might expect out of a tortured art artist who spends all his time confined to his studio. <laughs> I've been in houses where you couldn't... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see the floor. Yeah, for sure. Discarded canvases line its edges while trash and sketches leak out from their places in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Why does he have a bare cement floor? That seems like pretty weird. For a bedroom. Ghoulish faces coat the walls in paint, sneering out at their creator. Can we just like appreciate his room for a second? Like, this is the artist's domain here. And some of his art is like super creepy. They look like ditchlings, some of them look like Wayne. So a lot of them look like him. him. So there's like a common uh, theory in the Scarlet Hollow fan discord that something is very wrong with Reese and it has something to do with cryptids, with the ditchlings, with all this stuff because he's got so much of this art down here and he's got some very serious medical issues right now. One I didn't notice because it's usually hidden by the text box is that there's a canvas down there that looks like it's got like a hole punched through. So every time I go in back into these scenes and I like take a look at them, you see something different, which I kind of appreciate. There's a lot of like really small details in here, but we shall continue. Your mom is so scary. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Anyway, make yourselves comfortable. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately. I haven't been cleaning much. <laughs> I don't think your mom could stop me. <laughs> Alright. Like I said. Well, we gotta flirt, right? We've done almost all of these options. Except for the, the, the flirt and stuff. If you ever need a model, I'm here till Monday. Th that would be amazing. Though, I should warn you, I work odd hours. I don't usually pick up a brush until late at night. But that's not a deal breaker. It was incredible to have such a captivating model. I look forward to the company, and I hope I can do your likeness justice. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, Reese, you know how to talk to me. Kanika's eyes dart uncomfortably towards the floor. <laughs> Kanika does not like the flirting at all. Or maybe she just doesn't like that I flirt with everyone. Very strange. Stella's like, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Alright. Let's see. <laughs> oh my. It's like the George Takei. Oh my. I'm gonna do the powerful build one too. Do you need us to like break you out of here? I don't think your mom could stop me. I don't know. The dock's pretty resourceful. Plus, I'm stuck inside for my own good. Are you sure there's nothing we can do? Your company is plenty. It's so nice to have living people down here for a change. Do you have dead people down here? Are you dead? Dude. <laughs> Reese, are you okay? <laughs> you know we'd visit more if your mom let us. She did tell you. Did she tell you she tried to turn us away yesterday? She said we couldn't even talk to you. It's a little controlling. You came by yesterday? She didn't tell me, but I was probably asleep, that's all. She didn't want to wake me up. I don't think that's her being controlling or anything. Not to cast doubt on that, but she did say I couldn't bring you any food. She knows that's how I show my friends how much I appreciate them. And she knows I can work around all kinds of allergies and intolerances. Not gonna lie, it felt weird. I don't know. My body's pretty particular when it comes to food. She just prefers to have full control over what I eat, so... Oh. Okay. Maybe that does sound controlling. But it's for a good reason. If I eat the wrong thing, it can really mess me up. So she has to regulate my food. Let's see. What are you sick with? Jesus, Happy. Coming right in with that one, huh? We don't have to talk about your illness, Reese. It's okay. I've come to terms with the way the rest of my life is gonna be. <laughs> You're so macabre, Reese. You make it sound like you've been sentenced to death. Mm. You, you have it, right? He needs some friends. <laughs> he has friends, but his mom doesn't let their, let him see them. <laughs> Not exactly. No one really knows what's wrong with me, but it's been getting worse. I can barely keep most food down, my skin always itches like there's worms crawling underneath it. I could live for a long time or a short time, no one's sure. She's not controlling, she just controls my food, sociability, sleep schedule, how much I clean my room, all of that. But I'm definitely not going to get better. Whatever time I have left is going to be miserable. So I've done my morning, my best years are behind me, my future's unknowable. But one day, I'll wind up in a pine box, just like everyone else, and I'm okay with that. Dang, Reese. I may be goth, but that's some real nihilistic shit. We'll make sure to come by more often from here on out. Friendship heals all wounds, right? Thanks, guys. But you really shouldn't worry about me. I have my art. I'm doing fine, really. <laughs> so what's your diagnosis? All right, let's see. So you three go way back, huh? Almost to the womb. The school here is tiny, K to 12. Not exactly a one room schoolhouse, but not far from it. We're lucky we all got along as much as we did. Some kids weren't able to make any friends their own age. They just happened to be born around the same time as some real jerks and were stuck with them through their whole school career. Poor kids. Not that we were free from dealing with jerks, like a certain Scarlet I could name. Okay, she was a little rough around the edges, but she was pretty friendly when you got to past that. Maybe to you. The way she, she used to look at me, you'd think I rolled in something foul every morning before school. Same here, though to be fair the feeling was more mutual between us. She deserved it though. Okie dokie. Dinner's on the table. 
guess that's it for catching up. We've done all those other options in, in, in the other runs. Um, you can catch the other runs on YouTube though. So you can do exclamation point YouTube and get that link. Make sure you wash your hands with soap. I don't want anyone sharing their germs at the dinner table. Sure thing, Doc. <laughs> I'm allergic to soap. <laughs> My hands are already clean. <laughs> Exclamation point MySpace. Reese is in my top five. <laughs> Don't make this into a big thing. Just do it. You make your way towards the sink, but you're stopped in your tracks by the pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. It feels out of place, like you've accidentally wandered into a hospital waiting room. But more than that, you feel something radiating out from behind it. Something dark and cold. Something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. An oppressive hum just beyond your hearing fills the air, and you feel strange. You're compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotized. I love this one because there's so many there's so many doors. I'm trying to remember all the ones that we opened. I know we did the uh, the last one. We did four. I think we did seven. Ultimately, I don't know that it matters. Um, I won't do another poll for it, but uh, how about this? Just type the number in chat and the first number in chat from one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, between one and 12. So first number in there between one and 12, that's the door that will open. between 1 and 12. Because it's time to have some water. <laughs> I think we're saying the slowpoke should pick the number. Seven. Can it be a jerk and put by? I would have just rounded it to three. Because um, that's the engineering answer. Well, if we assume pi is three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think, I think we're going to open the door, Cabs. Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and a compulsive need to know it might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? We got slapped. <laughs> well, there's something compelling about this door. Hmm? Um, I'm looking for the bathroom. It's right so you pass by the open door that's clearly a bathroom and went snooping around. Come on, get washed up. Everyone's waiting on you. Assuming Pi is three is sphere and an, in a vacuum, little did Happy know that the hatch was the right way to go. Not the door, the hatch. That was not an option, but we'll, we'll try it anyway. You won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind the door. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. I feel like when I have, because I have powerful build, I should be able to shoulder past her, but I know that that's something that they're saving for the next episode, maybe, because um, I think we get plans to watch a movie with Reese, or could have plans to watch movies with, with Reese, like, the next day. She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. As you do as she says, cleaning under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. <laughs> the most awkward dinner ever. <laughs> Dinner's already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti, a light salad. Kanik is anxiously picking at her food, Stella's nervously talkative, and Reese is suddenly quiet and tense. The shoulders tight as his mother perches on the chair next to him. She eyes all of us with a sharp, fierce gaze. 
shapes. It's opposite you at the far head of the table, silhouetted against the light of the setting sun in the window behind her. It's a position of authority, where her height gives her a vantage point over everyone else. No one at this table does anything without her noticing. It almost feels like, despite the pretense of your friends, this is strictly a conversation between you and the doctor. Pails. She slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently swallows them. This is excellent. Dr. Kelly, is this pasta sauce homemade? No, it's from a jar. I work too many hours to make my own pasta sauce. Well, you have excellent taste in brands. And if you ever want any tips on easy home cooked pasta sauces, you know I... No thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes. Um, thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it. You didn't tell me they came by yesterday. You were asleep. I didn't want them to wake you up. But you could have told me. Why? They were coming over today anyway. I would just rather know these things. Noted. <laughs> so, I think the mean thing here to do is to just outright accuse her of child abuse, essentially, <laughs> of dousing her kid. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. You know, I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. It turns out the mom had been poisoning her kid for 18 years. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I saw that one too. Wild stuff. Is that so? Silence returns. Seconds feel drawn out like minutes. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody is making eye contact with anyone else. <laughs> so we go directly from doing that into uh, being hot. <laughs> There's no need for everyone to be so tense. Everything's okay. We're all just here to have a nice dinner. Speak for yourself. Doc, really, it's fine. Is it, or am I being interrogated in my own home by a guest I've never met? In Happy's defense, and a lot of awful stuff has happened in the past couple days, and there are a lot of lingering questions. It's pretty hard to take the de detective hat off once you've put it on. That may be the case, but Re Reese doesn't need to be agitated by this. I want to know what's going on out there. I don't care if it agitates me. And look, I'm fine. There's a long quiet as Dr. Kelly closes her eyes in reflection. All right, I'll try and give this a chance. All right. Do, do, do. what's the most terrible thing to say? Does no one in this town have two parents? <laughs> We're already part of the, the Mouseketeer Club, AKA we've already asked two characters if they wanted to join the Dead Moms Club. Um, obviously Reese's mom is still here, but the dad clearly is not. Mm -hmm. Concerningly macabre. We're gonna do it. <laughs> Does no one in this town have two parents? <laughs> Just make her the most mad she could possibly be. How quickly can we make this end? How concerned can Kanika start looking? Small towns are full of drama. People meet when they're young and reckless and it doesn't always work out long term. Plus, these hills are dangerous and the jobs even more so. Things happen. Not everyone gets some fairy tale ending. You can find happy endings anywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect, but people can still be happy even if bad things have happened to them. Look, I'm- <coughs> I'm fine! I'm fine! Oh my goodness, slowpoke. I guess living in denial is kind of happiness. Sure. Alright. So the food is not good. Apparently. <laughs> Have you ever seen a dead body? The foods are really good. 
and please send a letter thanking the mass manufacturer of the spaghetti sauce and pasta. I just heated them up. And I don't like wasted air at the dinner table, so keep your vaguely polite niceties to yourself while the rest of us finish our plates. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody's making eye contact with anyone else. Still, same thing. Hi Jess, welcome in. Hi Jess. Welcome in. We're having the world's most awkward dinner party. <laughs> the world's most awkward dinner party for sure. Thank you guys. How well do you know Tabitha? Not very. I'd know her a lot better if your family didn't seem to be so afraid of doctors. I can count on one hand the number of times she's been in my office. No wonder everyone but that old Edward Dean died so young. Hopefully your mother was better about talking, taking you to doctor visits. I wouldn't be surprised if there was something genetic at play, but it's much better to catch those things early. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you want me poking around the clinic? You seemed awfully guarded about me checking out that door. Wait, they're having dinner rolls with pasta? Why not go fancy and get the oven safe garlic bread instead? Um, good question. Good question. We always love a good carbo load dinner. Carbo load dinner. There was no meat, like, talked about. It was just rolls and pasta with sauce and salad. There was no meat involved with this dinner. Because it's closed. Doctors don't usually just let people wander around to their clinics. Of course, Dr. Kelly, we would never. I'm sure Happy's just joking. Right, Happy? You know, I can't say I ever felt drawn to the place before, but the secrecy is starting to make it feel awfully compelling. Still, I don't think of getting any ideas from Happy. No one is playing hide and seek in my private offices. Not today, not ever. Mama Bear is not pleasant. No, she's not. She doesn't need any more bad influences. Yeah, but what if it's haunted? This place was built out of an old Civil War hospital, right? It was a TB clinic, too. Double haunted. I can't believe I never went ghost hunting here. Are you sure you don't want us to check it out? We have a whole bunch of extra experience after tonight. It's not haunted. Now drop it. The more you talk, the less you feel like you're having a conversation. And the more you feel like you're treading on eggshells. <laughs> hey, when you're treading on eggshells, what's better to ask than have you seen a dead body? <laughs> There was a salad. Dr. Kelly just opened the mixed bag and called it a day. Didn't she? Not even dressing. No dressing. It looks like just, uh... It looks like just, uh, leaves and tomatoes. <laughs> just lettuce and tomatoes. That's it. And it's just, like, cherry tomatoes cut in half. the hydration reminder slowpoke and thank you cake for redeeming that was really silly I love that one it was really silly <laughs> we're gonna do it anyway you're a doctor have you ever seen a dead body what kind of question is that I'm a doctor of course I've seen a dead body I have in fact seen many dead bodies before she's also the Scarlet Hollow coroner so she's seen the dead body of everyone who's died in Scarlet Hall, at least in the past few decades. I'm not a coroner, I'm a medical examiner. A coroner is an elected official. I'm just a doctor licensed to do autopsies. But it's not something I have to do very often, not exactly what I'd call dinner talk, so let's drop it, shall we? Reaches a breaking point. <laughs> All right, that's enough. So, I was wondering if maybe we could watch a movie or something sometime this week, while Happy's still in town. We'll have to see how you're feeling. I can handle a movie, Doc. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You're always overestimating how much you're able to do, Reese. That's why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not like that's ever going to change. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting better. 
I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in the basement alone just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous. I'm an adult for God's sake. I can't believe I have to ask for permission for my mom just to have friends. <gasps> don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix. She looks very concerned and he looks very much like he's in pain. Reese? Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it, I knew this would be too much. Everyone, get out of my house, please. Just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. But we can't just leave him <laughs> But we can't just leave him like this. Now is when he needs his friends the most. Now is when he needs me the most. I am his doctor and his mother, which is a violation of ethics codes or something. I know you care about him. I know that, and he knows it too. But all any of you would do is get in the way. So just leave. Please. <laughs> he seemed fine before dinner. It always comes in waves, and I can assure you that right now he's very much not fine. Now leave. Three of you are rushed to the door. All right. Thank you, Slowpoke. Um, thank you for hanging out for uh, all the emotes and chitty chats. Thank you for the good luck. Have fun, and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you sometime later this week, and I'm sure Slowpoke. So have a good one. Um, let's give a shout out on his way out for Slowpoke. Definitely a fun streamer playing Alice Madness Returns last. And uh, yes, don't die. Certainly. Certainly don't die. Um, we'll see you next time, Slow. Um, we're going to continue on with the haunting. I hope you feel better soon. She slams the door in our faces and locks it pretty loudly. Do you really think Reese's mom is poisoning him? If she is, I swear to God, she wouldn't. That's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid? Oh my goodness! FaZe! Hi, FaZe! Thank you for gifting a sub to Jess! Oh my goodness, thank you so much! Aw, oh, that was very sweet of you, FaZe. And Jess, enjoy, enjoy the sub, enjoy the emotes. Hi, FaZe, how are you? How are you doing? I love seeing the, you do the, the, the like positivity tweets on Twitter, right? And yes, we appreciate it all lurkers. Thank you so much. Thank you for gifting a sub to Jess. Jess, enjoy the emotes and no ads. Um, enjoy the no ads. Thank you for the lurks and thank you for the gift sub. Thank you so much, FaZe. I really do appreciate that. <laughs> And welcome into chat, FaZe. Hopefully your lurk was was uh, was just as fun. No, no. There's no way. Y'all are barking up the wrong tree. It seems far-fetched, but it's definitely and it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule out. <laughs> well, I appreciate them. Sometimes sometimes I need those types of reminders as well, so FaZe on on Twitter, FaZe does a lot of positivity tweets, and they're just so pleasant. Because <laughs> you can certainly get yourself into a spiral going through Twitter. They are A+, 100% Jess. 100%. There's something seriously wrong with that dynamic. That's probably the understatement of the week. This whole thing is fishy. I'm starting to feel that my fear of Dr. Kelly is a little more justified than I thought. She's just overprotective. I'm sure that's all that's going on. And she has every right to be. I mean, the poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. I can't imagine what it's like for them to both to go through. Look, I'm just saying maybe there's more to their dynamic than just him being sick. But it's not like there's much we can do about it right now. 
We could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen. She's holding Gretchen. And get going. Little bug there. <laughs> the sun is setting and we wouldn't want to miss a second of ghost action. Oh my gosh, we're just we're just trading the gift subs. Jess, thank you for gifting a sub to FaZe. Y'all just y'all just really swapped on that one, huh? <laughs> thank you, Jess, for gifting a sub to FaZe. And then FaZe, you enjoy the emotes and ad-free viewing for a month. <laughs> Yes, enjoy that. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, FaZe. You guys are both great. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys. Oh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. And yes, all the hearts for, for all the, the sub love going on in here. Very much appreciate the vibe going on. It's about to get spooky, guys. It's going to get spooky in about two minutes. Because <laughs> now it's time for the haunt. And as we know, ditchlings portend for future doom. And there are one, two, three, at least three ditchlings that I can see on this screen. So yeah, it's going to be nice and fun. <laughs> awesome. I love... <laughs> you guys not using the rage or despair emojis for the haunting. It's just like the sunnies. Lit by the orange hues of the setting sun, the library feels different. So I guess we did need our sunnies. What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure, its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. Little squish friends. <laughs> they do look very squishable. In fact, oh, oh my gosh, I was, you think of Wayne and there he is. Do you guys see Wayne? <laughs> He's in the window. <laughs> I totally missed him the first time I looked. Oh my goodness. There he is. Speaking of squishing friends, Wayne squishes friends. <laughs> the despair emoji is only for my mass murdering of tiny beasts. I don't do it on purpose, guys. I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> but yeah, Wayne is in the window. He's there, he's watching, and he's been waiting. Maybe Stella's right. Maybe ghosts aren't real and the rest of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the evenings of the past few days. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is what, my fifth or sixth playthrough of episode three? And I had never seen him in this frame before. I just totally missed him all the other times. And it's not like you're not on this frame for a while. But yeah, he's right there. Your fists have gotten you this far. If there's something in there, you can take it. <laughs> Choose violence. <laughs> a ghost hunt seems like a perfect place to sneak in some smooching under the guise of splitting up and searching for clues. Maybe a special someone might be interested in breaking off from the rest of the group. <laughs> yep. I've watched a bunch and played it and missed it too. Yeah, they really like sneak him in there. It's, it's, I have to like always be on the lookout for, for scenes where he might be in. Hi, Pixel. Pixel's over there in the corner. Just as its exterior was intimidating in the setting sun, the inside of the library is dark, its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. Hey, Oscar, are you back yet? Shh. You can't yell in the library, it's against the rules. It's after hours. Rules only apply before 5 p.m. Now it's our domain. Hey, you're here sooner than I expected. Hope dinner went okay? Yeah, it went okay. Reese wasn't feeling up for a longer hangout, unfortunately. Sorry to hear that. It's okay, just means we have more time to hunt ghosts. I've come fully loaded, got my EMF reader, temperature gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video cameras, salt, flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with the electricity, parabolic microphones, sharpies, and paper for automatic writing, matches, and candles for rituals. Oh, and a Ouija board. I know they're toys, but you never know what might come in handy. Wow, that is a lot of ghost hunting stuff for someone, something so last minute. Do you just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple of bags here overnight after I got back from the mines. Excuse me? 
I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. This way we can go in light and pop out to grab more stuff as things start getting spooky. I may never have found any compelling evidence of ghosts, but that's not for lack of trying. And after last night, I'm more than ready to try again. Uh-huh. <laughs> like aliens. This whole town is one big supernatural death trap. Hopefully not a death trap. There's there's still a chance those kids are going to be okay, right? I hope so. I don't know enough about mind collapses to know how bad that one last night was. The other day I was in a library and people started throwing Stephen King books around. Couldn't figure out what was going on and then it hit me. <laughs> oh yes, those are the kind of jokes I do appreciate here on this channel. Um, keep them coming. I love those books. <laughs> those kind of jokes. Oh man. I think we were talking about ghost hunting. Yo, don't ru rush off ghost busting without Zane. No way I was gonna forget your promise, Stella. Zane, glad you could make it. <laughs> I was confronted with my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I'm desperate for answers about the afterlife to ease my troubled mind. Now let's go mess with some ghosts. I like how his shirt also says Zane. Like, he got a custom shirt, or just drew on his shirt so that it says Zane. I hope my house is big enough for five ghost hunters at once. If this is everyone, we can go ahead and get started. It's through the back. Follow me. Yep, grabbing some equipment and head towards the junction connecting Oscar's house and the library. Looks like the sun is almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey! There's no way you're doing this without me. Rosalina, we talked about this. No, you talked at me. I'm sick of other people making decisions for me. I will just want to be able to live in our house again. I'm going in there and sleeping in my room tonight, no matter what. Well, you're not going to go in this. Rosa, it could get dangerous in there. Just hang out in the library and we'll have this taken care of in a few hours. I don't want to be coddled just because you're scared. If Zane is coming, I have every right to be here. He's got a good point, Mr. G. Right, I'm sorry, Rosa. Just let me know if it gets to be too much and you want to leave, okay? Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. Gotta appreciate the hustle on Rosalina's part. Also, it's much easier for her if she doesn't have a... when she has both legs. <laughs> for sure. You all cross over the threshold and enter Oscar's living room. Family photos line the walls and the stack of books sits comfortably on wooden furniture. Looks pretty normal for now. I don't remember that picture being on the floor, but that could be non-supernatural. None of my equipment's picking up anything around the picture. But I'll set up a camera in case it falls again. Could be important evidence. You might want to save your cameras for Rosalina's room. That's where I've seen the ghosts manifest. It's just down the hall. Oscar and Kanika startle as the door swings open. Hold it. You're not taking my cousin along on any more of your little hijinks without me. Tabby! I can't believe you had the audacity to give me the slip earlier today, Happy. After I explicitly asked you not to. At least you did me the courtesy of le letting me know exactly where you'd be tonight so I didn't have to waste my time looking for you. Wait, Happy, you invited her here? Wow, Happy, you really brought the whole gang together today. I have every right to be here, Kanika. My family built this place, you know? Yeah, I know. We all know. Happy, what made you think inviting her was a good idea? The poll told me to. I'm just placating her. 
I'm just placating her. She won't let up about all the dangerous situations I keep finding myself in, and I don't want to get chewed out again. I guess that's fair, but let's not make this a regular thing. Don't worry, Kanika. Once my cousin leaves, we can go right back to ignoring each other as God intended. Aw, oh, come on, y'all. A lot's changed since high school. Maybe you two could be friends if you tried. <laughs> the mutual disgust in their eyes tells you Stella's not correct. She's she's not right. She's not right. Uh, but maybe for now you can ghost hunt on opposite sides of the room. Sounds like we're in for an interesting night. I wonder if the ghosts will even show with this many people around. Well, wait. Is it just me or does it suddenly feel colder? It sure does. I definitely feel that. The temperature gun says it's actually a couple of degrees cooler, but that's normal. Rooms and hallways are sometimes colder than other parts of the house. Whoa, a genuine cold spot. I gotta snap a pic for posterity. Like you can take a picture of a temperature change. Zane, please. Zane, please. Is that it? This isn't very scary. could lie and feel a presence. Oscar, are you sure there's really a ghost? It's possible that it doesn't like crowds. It's only ever shown itself while I was alone. You're welcome then. We busted it up just by showing. Can't believe you were so weak that you were driven out of your house by a ghost that's too afraid to show itself. Dad, you said it usually comes out at night, right? I guess that means it still has time to show up. God, what if it is all over my head? I'm not sure if it'd be more of a relief or an embarrassment. I don't know. This cold spot's pretty solid evidence, though I won't be satisfied until we see the full-bodied full apparition. Yo, Mr. G, how, like, scary does this guy look? Gotta know what to keep my eyes out for. It's a 10. Definitely a 10. He's a 10, but he's a haunting... <laughs> he's, a, he's a ghostly apparition. He's a 10, but he's a ghostly apparition. Dope. Maybe we should, like, split up. I want to make sure someone sees this thing. Sure. Me and my cousin can search the least dangerous room, like a bathroom, or a closet. Yeah, you're probably right. If we discover a ghost here, we shall all discover it together. That, that's not exactly the angle I was going for, but okay. Yo, once we find the ghost, how are we going to get rid of it? Like, how does one bust such a thing? Well, my ghost hunting kit has symbols for every major religion, assorted holy books, a bunch of salt, and some jars. For ectoplasm. And if worse comes to worse, we can always use the Ouija board to politely ask it to leave. Ouija boards are toys. The only power they have is scaring kids at slumber parties. I think I'd rather not take the chance. One ghost is enough to deal with. I don't much like the thought of opening a door for something worse. Wow, you've never been this superstitious, Dad. This ghost really has you freaked out. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's head to Rosalina's room. Follow me. Here we go. That feeling again. Like the mines, like the door to the clinic. A dusty, suffocating, dizzying feeling. Something's in this house. Though whether it's a ghost or something worse, you aren't sure. Whoa. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain. Yeesh. That's gotta be tough to scrub out. Doesn't the county own this house? Do they know about the damaged carpet? Have you seen your house? I don't see how that's relevant. Weird. I'm not getting anything. It's not even cold. It's the same temperature as the living room. Nothing on the EMF, either. And your equipment's wrong. The stain's definitely paranormal. I've scrubbed it out too many times to count, and it just keeps coming back. It's just a stain, Dad. Can't we just cover it back up? I don't mind sleeping in here. Hmm. 
let's get some let's get scientific about this. We've scrubbed the stain out a bunch. Maybe that's part of a summoning ritual. I've never heard of a bleach activated ghost before. You don't use bleach to clean a carpet, Tabitha. Whatever. How was I supposed to know that? Not everybody gets to learn how to clean things. Are you offering clean, free cleaning services? Be my guest. Do, 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 do. Have you tried tearing my carpet up? In a house owned by the government? No. I'm not messing with their carpets. I'd rather scrub ghost blood out of the carpet every day than have the government take me to court for destroying their property. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll just take you to court for neglect instead. Did it not occur to you that there could be a leaky pipe under the floor? I hate to agree with Tabitha on anything, but some kind of structural damage does seem likely to be... Tearing up the carpet doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Plus, there might be something written under there, in blood. Only one way to be sure. Stella excitedly starts tugging at the corner of the carpet. Oh dear. You're doing the government a favor, really. She pulls back the carpet, revealing a hatch. Here's the hatch. So we tried to take the door. Cake said we should have taken the hatch. Here's the hatch. We're gonna take it. <laughs> okay. Maybe I don't want to sleep in here. A hatch! <laughs> We're not going down there, right? Of course we are. This is even better than finding a message. But, but there's no basement in this house. At least we weren't told about a basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Yeah, this is super haunted, all right. You've got a basement chock full of ghosts. I can just feel it. Y'all know last month was super rainy. It's clearly been a long time since anyone stepped a foot in the basement or crawl space or whatever's under that hatch. There must be a leak that flooded the whole area under the house. The water dissolved the caulk around the edges and leaked through the carpet. It's red because North Carolina has red-ass dirt. It's simple as that. It's not mud. It's blood. Human blood. I tested it. We love a good hatch. We love a good hatch. Well, you tested it wrong. Ugh. It can't be blood, right? Kanika's is right. You've got a muddy floor, and that's why it's so cold in here, too. There's wet dirt under the house. Congratulations, we've solved your ghost problem. Again. No way. There's an old hatch in the floor that someone tried to seal up. We're not leaving until we know what's down there. I'm with Stella. This is my room, and I need to know what's down there. Have you considered that they may have tried sealing it up because it's unsafe? Oh, do you think the flooding could have made the house unstable? I'm all in on ghost hunting, but I don't know if I could crawl into another dangerous crevice. I'm going for it. Stella. Uh-huh. Stella. Also, just realized that in this version, that painting is gone. Which is maybe why it was on the floor. Mm hmm You can't tell what time it is and your friends are nowhere in sight. The building feels colder. There's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale with an undercurrent of mold and earth. It makes you feel claustrophobic, as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left. How did... How, how did we end up back here? Where is everyone? Did we pass out again? Was there a gas leak in the basement or something? She keeps ditching me. It's definitely... <laughs> Okay, what the hell is going on? Maybe it's just another gas pocket or mold or something shaken loose by the collapse yesterday. I don't know. This isn't exactly a normal occurrence for me. 
Now let's get the hell out of here before the bad air gives us brain damage. She marches to the front door and opens it. Speaking of spooky things, there's now a ghastly in chat. <laughs> let's try and catch that. Maybe it'll give us some good vibes as we get personally victimized by Charles Shaw. Why, why does it look like Oscar's house is in front of us? Didn't we just leave? I must be mis misremembering things. Let's go. You have no objections to her plan. The two of you cross the hallway and open the door. <laughs> the haunting has started. Something isn't right. It feels like a late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet and the scent of flowers drifts on the breeze. Ooh. This. Did we die? Don't be so dramatic. I think I'd know if we were dead. There's got to be an exit somewhere. We just have to look. Wait, do you hear music? Uh, the swipe-ins are as close to jump scares as we get here. <laughs> Stella? Who are you? What are you doing on my property? Huh? We don't have any traits to get the, uh, congrats on catching the ghastly, Jess. Did we die? <laughs> um, we didn't get any, we don't have any traits to, like, channel, channel the, uh, the dialogue. So we don't get it this time. <laughs> I know, the crunchy noise, very, uh, not, not fun. <laughs> Holy shit, Stella, you scared me. Y yeah, cut it out. Did you say Eddie? No one's called me that in a long time. It's Edward Dean now. I'm not a child anymore. Edward Dean? Eddie? You've got to be kidding me. Snap her out of it. Grab Stella by the shoulders, attempting to shake her from her trance, but as you try to pull her shoulder, it's as if she's held back by invisible ropes. I wish I could say the same. You should have stayed gone. And you absolutely shouldn't have shown up here, of all places. If you're caught, I don't think you understand what Father might do. So we tried it again, snap her out of it harder, pull with all your strength, digging your heels into the strange shifting earth beneath you. <gasps> oh, we got her! We got her? Oh my god. <laughs> Help me! Get me out of here, it hurt! Oh my god. <sighs> We've never been in a run where, like, they've broken out of it in any way. Oh my god. You can hear the ropes tighten around her again. Your physical strength is meaningless here. It is a great noise, but wow, does it make me uncomfortable. Oh my god. Stella. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to the Western Front, and now... I'm the only Scarlet left besides Father. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Shut up. Shut up. Edwardine Scarlet? Do you know that name? Of course I do. She is our great-grandmother. And Stella knows that. But if this is some kind of possession, there's no way it's her ghost. Edwardine died in the estate. There's no reason she would be haunting the Annex. Interesting that she knows where Edwardine died. 
You should get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it. Let her go, spirit. And taking Gretchen, too. Mm -hmm. Come on. We must have taken the wrong door out of the annex. We're getting out of here before anything else happens. I'm going after Stella. We should hold hands for safety. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. Okay, we're going, but instead of Oscar's living room, we're met with the closed door in the middle of the garden's greenery. Where, where did the annex go? Let's turn back. Y yeah, maybe we just got turned around. Two of you turn around, only be met with the same door. Where's the annex? Where are we? Maybe if we 360 instead of 180, let's try again. <laughs> maybe if we turn 360 degrees instead of 180, let's try again. You both turn again. The door is even closer. Screw this. Storms up to the door and throws it open. Oh dear. The bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it. The shaded figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. So many ditchlings in here. One, two, three, four, five. At least five ditchlings in here. Very unsettling. Very unpleasant. Are you kidding me? This is messed up. We need help. Also, the perspective in this room. God, please let this call go through. Uh huh. Hey, it's. What? No, it's Tabitha. Didn't you see the caller ID? Stop interrupting me. Can't you hear what I'm... Your cousin's cut off by the dial tone of a disconnected call. Great. She couldn't hear a word, I said. Looks like we're on our own. Ooh. Alright. We're good. Squish party. Your father's left town, Charlie. We're moving to a new house, okay? We have to choose violence whenever it's possible, so we're probably gonna have to pick this first one. We pick violence whenever possible. That's that's part of the rules. It's a shadowy figure in the corner dictating the flow of events. We got Kai Kaioken. <laughs> Times three. <laughs> Times three. The second one was Deckham in the Schnoz. <laughs> that's when you choose violence three times in a run through. <laughs> Gotta choose violence. It's a shadowy figure in the corner dictating the flow of events. The last thing you're gonna do is wait to find out. You plant your feet against the ground and launch yourself into a powerful tackle. Only, you don't actually go anywhere. It's suddenly as if the floor beneath you has become a treadmill. As though, try as you might, you find yourself comically running in place. What are you doing? Um, just stretching. <laughs> I can't punch the ghost. What's the point? What's the point of doing anything? Uh... I'm just stretching. Yeah, I'm stretching. No, you weren't. You were trying to punch the ghost, weren't you? You can't come back. We've got to live somewhere else now. But that'll be fun, right? There'll be new kids to play with. You can show them your little dolls. Hurry, sweetie, we don't have much time. Why aren't we possessed? Who knows? It probably wants an audience, though, right? No, she can't come. I never want you to say her name again, do you hear me? We aren't friends with the Scarlets anymore. I feel like this is different dialogue. I don't feel like this was the dialogue the last time we were here. Oh god, they're outside. Are those 
torches? We don't have time, Charlie. We have to go right now. Ooh, that's different dialogue. Yep. As she departs, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. We're in hell. We've both died, and we're in hell. Let's kill you the ghost. Who did you call on the phone earlier? Friend of the family. Not that it matters, though. The call didn't go through, so we're on our own. There are so many ditchlings here. Ditchlings? You mean those gross little creatures lurking around? Yeah, they really are a lot of them. Let's go through the door. You walk up to where the pounding door used to stand and step into the void. You're outside and it's night, a false moon looming massive in the painted sky. The night feels thick and warm, the insects lively, their calls unnaturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong, like you're listening to a record fished from the bottom of a pond. Ugh, what magic words do I have to say to get you to let us go? I'm sorry, okay? Whatever my family did to piss you off so much, I'm sorry. Hello, Tanika. You poor dear. I've been keeping track of you scuttling around town like a tomcat. You've fallen hard for Miss Edwardine, haven't you? Is it just me, or does that shadow keep getting closer? Not just you. There's no need to be embarrassed. Your secret's safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlets did to your family, and what it did to the two of you youngins. Childhood sweethearts. Just think how lovely it would be if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? So, Edwardine and Charlie, let me just spoil it for you and say it doesn't work out. Our great-grandfather's name was not Charles. <laughs> Thank you for the hydration reminder, there's so much talking. Very much appreciate the cake. Thank you very much. I'm sure by now you realize the young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you. But it's not for lack of desire, as you well know. It's Enoch. Even if you dragged her over the town limits, his hold over her would make me sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think of what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be the two of you? The new Sharknado mascot, you need the water. Yeah, I need to post the photos of the, the costume into, into some discords. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely need the, the water for the Sharknado stuff, for sure. What do you know about Enoch, Tabitha? Our great-great-grandfather, who was in charge of the mines when they collapsed. I don't know much besides that, so don't bother asking. What happened to our parents? Assuming this ghost is Charlie, its parents were driven out of town after the Shaw Mine collapsed in 1918. That was the last room we were in. Powers at work here are stronger than even your love could withstand. You need to break the bonds holding her here. Then you can both go free. No more misfortune. Not for you, not for anyone else bold enough to step foot outside the hollow. Everything you need to know is on that map. What's that about misfortune and stepping foot outside the holler? Is the town cursed? That's where you'll find them. You need her there. Then read what I've written down and be careful. Good luck to the both of you. I hope you get your happiness. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, let's find the way out. 
Unless you have any ideas, I don't think there's anything else we can do until we get to the end. Or until we die. Whichever. Before we can leave, a smell hits you. Another ghosty Pokemon. Gotta try and catch that one, right? It is October. Let's try. Sweating and suffocated flesh with a tinge of the saccharine and stomach churning scent of decay. There you are. I would have found you sooner, but the resonant clearly doesn't want me here. It doesn't seem to have the same issue with these miserable little parasites. Very squishy friends. Very squishy friends. Bottom feeders always manage to slip through the cracks, don't they? <laughs> All right. We're just a mean girl, right? I've been waiting for a rematch. I know, right? It's super gross. I could squish, squish a dish if I wanted to. We tried to fight him last time, which was one of our violence things. Um, didn't go well. But we're gonna, we gotta choose violence, right? Good. I've been waiting for a rematch. Because that worked out so well for you last time. Really? Is that how you treat a potential ally? Tabitha grabs your arm, her grip tight and nervous. Oh, we caught the Sableye. Nice. We're leaving. What an unfortunate situation you've been dragged into, Happy. Why can't you do as I ask and stay out of trouble? But that girl won't let you go, will she? Stella? Is that her name? Perhaps I should pay her a visit soon, if she makes it out alive. Tabitha bolts for the underbrush, desperately pulling you along. S Stella? <laughs> Yo, so is Wayne single, or...? We could be, we are the most, like, opposite ends of the spectrum here. I want to fight him, but also <laughs> I want to buy his plushie. Um, we are selling the plushies right now. We, I, <laughs> uh, I don't want to pick this, but it's part of the rules. <laughs> it's part of the rules, I know. I know. Lol. So, is Wayne single? <laughs> I feel like I have an achievement for this. So, is Wayne single or... What the hell kind of question is that? This is no time for jokes. Listen to me. If you run into that thing again, don't talk to it. Just ignore it. Or better yet, run away. Now, come on. It got. If it got in here, there must be a way out. <laughs> we got an achievement for that. Monster lover. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, gross. One, two, three, four ditchlings. Four ditchlings. Oh. The two of you step out into a long wooden corridor lined by bottles and rails. <laughs> Hugs the heart plushie. Wayne. Wayne. Hi, Zane. <laughs> I'm afraid he doesn't have long. If there's anything you need to say to him, I'd say it now. Poor Oscar. Zane is swept away, the room pulls itself to you, and you find yourself looming over a deathbed. Oscar lies in its center, looking pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. Sorry I let my troubles drive your mama away. I'm sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now. But this is the dad played by a dad. <laughs> so this is the dad played by a dad. It looks especially painful, like on an emotional level. Even if everyone else could understand what we were saying, I wonder if he can hear us too. Damn it, Junior, how many times do I have to tell you? I tried to stop it from happening, but that damn snake Enoch went behind my back. 
Oh, what bullshit. Strike a nerve? It was Charles Shaw's fault. That's just a fact. You're right, I've been using that excuse for too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept he's dug his own grave. They may have run out on me, but they didn't put the bottle in my hand. Still, they destroyed our legacy, boy. Both our names are cursed with that history. I'll be dead and gone soon, but I won't be able to rest. Not until our name is cleared. Not until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there. Tell people the truth. Try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. I know I ain't been the best father, but I'm no murderer. Do you think that's why he was getting close with Edward Dean? I don't know. I guess it's possible, but it doesn't look like it panned out. Promise me you'll go back and at least show that Enoch bastard what for. You watch as Oscar's body seizes and falls through the sheets, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. This ghost is so full of it. Cousin steps forward and disappears through the hole left in the bed, leaving you to follow. Let's go. <laughs> you and your cousin find yourself crouched under a large table. Stella stares at you through an indecipherable murmurs and shuffling feet echo from the ends of the table. I think I'm gonna be sick. These are so lovely. Are you sure I can keep one? You must have worked very hard on them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. This one is extra creepy. Is she doing a baby voice? Yeah, it's humiliating. This ghost really has no respect for his actors. I'll try and keep it away from my brother so they don't smash it. Though I wish I could make it move like you can. And you can even do the voices. You know, you could probably make real money if you put on a show for people. <laughs> oh, yes. Dang. Even possessed Stella is out here trying to monetize hobbies. Don't joke. You're pissing off the ghost. A traveling show? And you'd want me there too? Oh, we could go to towns along the beach? I've heard the Outer Banks are the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. I always wanted to see the ocean. Yep, there we go. There. Are you done now, Charlie? Can we leave? Uh-huh. <laughs> Gretchen. And then he's clapping. Single spotlight remains, illuminating a trap door in the center of the stage. You feel drawn to it. Do you think it's over? I don't think it's over until we go through that trap door. Which one of us is going to open it? You should open it. Uh, okay, fine. I'm not scared. Crease open all on its own. 
Oh god, this is so much worse than opening it ourselves. <laughs> you and Tabitha are shoved from behind and tumble through the hatch. There it is. Took some digging, but it's there. The map was right. That means there's hope, Edie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. We can be happy to get. Yeah. Eddie? Mm hmm. Some violence. Sorry about that. If you weren't expecting it, this is a horror game. Oh god. I think I'm actually gonna be sick this time. Cousin violently heaves into the void, but nothing comes up. There's nothing here. This place is completely empty. So, Edwardine was a murderer. <laughs> Maybe we're in purgatory. Are we in hell? Maybe we're in purgatory. Does it matter? Ugh, what now? Do you repent? Do you repent for your crimes? <laughs> okay, so this must be the one where I throw Tabitha under the bus. <laughs> as a result of the rules, and I have to be mean. <laughs> Oh man, I don't want to. I like Tabby. We were just starting to get along and bond over shared trauma. Let's do let's do this one first. Why should I be? I'm not responsible for any of this. Neither am I. The Dr. Evil Emo. <laughs> That's a yes. You must answer for the crimes committed by your scarlet blood. Are you kidding me? I hate it here. I hate it here so much. As I do, I cannot die. I want to die. Please. I've been alone in the dark for so long. All I ask is for some of your years. If you want to die, why do you want any years? Again, this is like the continual question. To pay for the years that were taken from me. What? What are you saying? My life was stolen from me. I want some of yours. It's only fair. No. 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 It is absolutely not fair. You've got to be kidding me. Neither of us had anything to do with what happened to you. The sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. One of you must forfeit. It doesn't matter which. Bullshit. I don't understand. You will live a shorter life. And I will finally be satisfied. I will have justice. <laughs> Rude. I will finally die. You will leave this house at last. And what happens if we refuse? Then I will stay. I'll stay until I get what I'm owed. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. Hi, Sybil. I hope I didn't come too late. Uh -huh. All of you had better get out of here before the spirit regains its composure. This is certainly a strong one, isn't it? Don't worry about the others. They're safe. I got your call, Tabitha, but it was definitely not easy getting down here. Get us out of this pit, Sybil. Tabitha, I don't think it wise to leave something like this where anyone could stumble across it. Why is that my problem? It wants something, doesn't it? And I think you know which of you should volunteer. You, you must be joking. You're the eldest cousin. You're the one who's actually lived in this town. It's only right. Sybil's so sus, I know. Like... So, Sybil is like the most suspicious character in this entire game. Like, 
Tybee has a lot of secrets. Kanika's got a lot of stuff going on. Reese is very spooky. And Dr. Kelly kind of freaks me out a little bit. But out of all of them, Sybil's the one who I'm like the most afraid of. Like even more than like Wayne. Because she just knows things. And then she sweeps everything under the rug. Because she's, she did it at the end of last episode, she's gonna do it at the end of this episode. She's just like, nothing to see here. We don't need to talk about that. I'm not gonna tell you that thing that you wanna know. Also, there's a sneeze in the chat. Gonna try and catch that. Anyway, she, is, she knows so much. Like, I had speculated at one point that she is the original witch, and somebody was like, oh no, she can't be the original witch, but I, I just think she's so suspicious. Absolutely not. We should just leave. I'm not giving into the demands of some dead guy. Knowing things is bad. It can be bad. It can be bad. <laughs> I agree with Sybil. I don't, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm not leaving before you put this thing to rest. I'm with Tabitha. Neither of us owe this ghost a damn thing. We're leaving. Yeah, you heard happy, Sib Sybil. Neither of us are compromising with this thing. Now, can you get us out of here? <sighs> Tabitha, are you sure you want to leave this business unfinished? Absolutely. This is not our problem. If you think the best course of action, yes, I can get you out. It's only a question of seeing through the illusion. Or in a basement, even if all of your senses are telling you otherwise. Try closing your eyes and remembering where you are. Suddenly the sounds and tactile sensations of the spirit realm feel much more distant, as though you've partially awoken from a terrible dream. Good. Now feel for the stairs. You fumble in the darkness, grasping for the air in front of you. Your palm meets wood with a solid thunk. It's the staircase. You can feel it under your hands. I found it! You begin your ascent. Good work, you two. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. You place a confident foot on the wooden floor of what you assume must be Rosalina's room. You open your eyes, seeing what feels like a superposition of the real and the fake. Don't let it trick you again. Its powers are currently struggling to maintain their grip on you. You continue. You feel the door frame under your palm and the sturdy walls of the hallway beyond. We're almost out. I knew it. I knew this ghost wasn't a big deal. It's only faltering now due to because it's exhausted. Don't underestimate the spirit, Tabitha. You stumble into the corridor between the annex and the library. The real world swims closer and closer to being back in focus. But doors! Come on, Happy, we're almost there. You and Tabitha fall forward towards the entrance, your legs still unsure of the ground beneath you, and the doors fly open. You're outside. This time it's real. A cool autumn breeze blows small pieces of piles of dead words. <laughs> Exclamation point words. <laughs> A small pile, small piles of dried leaves across the steps of the library. I'm gonna peace out. Back to back encounters with my own mortality. I've got a lot to ponder. See you, Rosalina walks off down the road. Finally, we're out of the funhouse. <laughs> Art is words, okay? Art is words. But the spirit remains. It would have been so much better to banish the thing. It spread from the annex to the entire building. Anyone who steps foot in there might be subjected to its torment. Not my problem. Not Happy's problem. I don't want anyone else in town to experience that. That was awful. We'll board the place up and say there was a gas leak. There. Fixed it. Suppose I'll have to find another place for me and Rosalina to stay. 
This was such a disaster. I'm so sorry I had to have brought you all into that house. I should have left the place to rot. We do have to pick the meanest option. I'm sorry, Tabby. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Here it goes. I wasn't about to give up part of my life when Tabitha was right there. If anyone has benefited from what our family's done, it's her. Are you kidding me? That's a very good point. Benefiting from what our family's done? What are you talking about? The only benefit I've had is working myself half to death to keep this town afloat. Do either of you think it's easy to run a coal mine? Do either of you think it's easy to have to grow up with Pearl Anne as your mother? Was I supposed to make things even harder on myself by making yet another sacrifice? Yes. Easy for you to say. You weren't given a choice tonight. It's okay, Kavika. It's just a house, and we didn't even own it. And even if we did, that ghost was asking for quite the down payment. It's more than just the house. It's also the library and the town hall. And even barring that, it's a dangerous space that we're just leaving there because Tabitha didn't have the guts to put other people before herself. Children, children, there's no use quibbling over the details right now. At least for the time being, the spirit has only grown in strength. If either Happy or Tabitha went back in there, I can only imagine its demands of them would be much steeper. There's no walking this back. Great! Now that we all, in principle, agree, it's done. Let's move on. Maybe the government can rent you another house? Yeah, I guess that's possible. We'll give the state a call in the morning. Okay, but you two need a place to sleep tonight, Oscar. Ugh. I don't usually do this sort of thing. The properties we own are for the miners, but there is a house that's vacant right now that might be suitable. You know the old Maxwell place? What? You can't be serious. That place is falling apart. Rosalina must have very good hearing to have heard that from all the way over there. Look, I'll tell you what. I won't even make you pay rent for the first month. Consider it repayment for not literally giving up my soul to get rid of a ghost that wasn't causing any problems until the two of you lived there. That's funny. I thought it was your family that pissed off the ghost. <laughs> your cousin furiously pulls out the key ring before picking, off, picking one off and handing it to Oscar. Thank you. This really means a lot to me and Rosalina. Now, if you all don't mind, I'm going home. I think I've had enough social interaction for a lifetime tonight. Finish up whatever you have to do here. I'll wait by the car. She doesn't wait for you to respond, pushing past you and heading to the car. To think that ghosts were actually real. I mean, I know we didn't have any hard evidence on us, but we all vividly experienced the same thing. Stella's gotta be over the moon right now. She doesn't look over the moon, Kaniga. Where is Stella? I kind of thought she'd be excitedly rattling off theories by now. Oh, she's just standing there by herself. That isn't like her. I'm going to go check on her. Oh, hey, Happy. Your channel is going to go wild for that stuff. Talk about insensitive. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk right now. See you later. <laughs> We're the worst. <laughs> We're terrible people. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm starting to think Stella might be a, a bit of a flake. <laughs> oh, Forgive me. Forgive me, everyone. 
I'm starting to think Stella might be a bit of a flake. She keeps leaving when things start getting heated. Stella is not a flake. Don't be a jerk. Should we go after her? I think she just needs some time to herself. Stella's never been the kind to share her burdens, and I doubt that'll change just because someone goes chasing after her. If anything, it just make her climb up even more. Feel the hate. Feel the hate. Suffering. Let it flow through you. I'm honestly surprised she and Zane are the only ones heading out right now. You've all been through something awful. And each and every one of you needs your rest, which is why I'm smiling. Especially you, Kanika. We don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. God, what a disaster this whole night's been. I had no idea it would turn out like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Stop apologizing, Dad. We're the ones who didn't have a house anymore. We don't even have the library now. I ran into Wayne in one of those rooms and he vaguely threatened Stella if I kept poking around. Wait, are you serious? Should we be worried about her? No, 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 don't make me say it, no, no, damn it, I should have known, I should have known, I should have known, god, freaking, <sighs> He also crushed a ditchling under his boot. It was actually kind of hot. Oh my god, gross. Did he say anything else to you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> say it. <laughs> we don't need to trouble Happy for the details. No one pay any man to that mine man behind the curtain on his face. <laughs> I love adding that because she's just like, put that underneath the curtain. Sweep that under the rug. Sweep that under the blood-stained rug at this point. He's just a drifter. He'll be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make any trouble. Okie dokie. I guess I should probably head back. We should probably get going. It's starting to get chilly out and I don't know how long it'll take to get things ready for the new place. I'll be over later tonight with some bedding and hot tea, and I'll have Miles bring you groceries in the morning. Don't be a stranger and let us know if you need anything, okay? Thank you. That really means a lot. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But, Kanika dear, you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Happy? But I'm wired. I'm stuck here, aren't I? <laughs> Did I manage to get out of bed? I'm stuck here, aren't I? I guess we all are. There she goes. Before I go. Uh-huh. I'm sure you have questions after everything you saw tonight. But let's not get into it here. I think everyone could use a little rest and relaxation right now, including yourself. If you swing by the tea room sometime tomorrow, say, early afternoon, you and I can have a little chat. I'll see you then, Happy. Why are you winking at me? We just had a traumatic experience. Stop it. Let's go back to the estate. So that's two things for day four. One is the uh, the tea room, and the other is movie re at Reese's is, is on the, the plan for, was it Thursday is the day? Yeah. Yes, tea. Have a, a lovely tea time. Um, she makes teas out of molds, though, <laughs> so uh, mm, debatable whether it's good tea or not. <laughs> 
The ride back is nearly silent, as you and Tabitha reflect on the night's events and your decision to leave the haunting intact. She looks pretty tired, yeah. She's pretty... a, a skosh. A skosh. Guess it goes surreal. So I guess ghosts are real. Yeah, guess so. Feels like people should be making a bigger deal of, about this. You'd be surprised how quickly people adjust to terrible realities. I'd much rather move on from what happened tonight than make a big deal out of it. And I'm sure most of your little friends feel the same way. This seems too nice. Mm -hmm. we, don't want, we don't want nice answers. No nice answers allowed. Back inside. After the events of this evening, the howling winds and unsteady creaks of the estate almost feel like a warm welcome. Well, we're back. Mm -hmm. How did you know to call Sybil? Who else should I have called but cops? I believe you've seen their competence on the full display. Besides, I'm sure you've heard the, that old woman talk. If anyone in this town would have had, bleh, would have known how to deal with a ghost, it'd be her, right? I want to talk about Wayne. Really talk. Here we go. Why is he all gross? He's sick or something. Probably part of why he's such a creepy weirdo now. I don't know if it's contagious, but I wouldn't rule it out, so don't go near him. Why is he following me? He's a creep, stalking his ex's cousin. Tabby's Wayne's ex. <laughs> all the more reason not to talk to him. He's a different man now. Stay away from him. You really don't want me talking to him. What does he know that you're afraid I'll find out? I just know him. Please trust me when I say he's bad news. I've already done the did you kill him, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty traumatized right now. That's great. Now you're really a Scarlet. I love her smiling face. The smile on her face, she's just like... Let this be a lesson to you, Happy. Okay, fine. We're not saying goodnight, we're just going to bed. All right, I'm turning in. Don't keep poking around looking for trouble. You just have to make it to the funeral. Four more days, that's all, then the bus comes. You can't tell me what to do. And then we never have to see each other again. Yes, we'll never have to see each other again. Anyway, good night. See you tomorrow. Let me go to bed. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly you're just there, buried under your family's musty covers. It's Wednesday night. Nearly half a week has passed since you first arrived in town, and a little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. The spirit of Charles Shaw Jr. now commands the entirety of City Hall, a swirling void of wrath and despair, as the people of this town will have to learn to ignore. Disaster looms its tallest yet, over Scarlet Hollow. It's a little eye strain here. A little warning for that. And that's episode three. It's episode three. That means that we're caught up on all of our runs. So as a reminder, we have this one, which is the powerful hot build. 
We have our first run, which is Street Smart Kenai. We have Mystical and Talks to Animals. We have um, Achievement Unlocked, Jalapeno, and uh, Miss World. Um, and we have Book Smart Mystical as another one, I think. So yeah, we, um, we have a whole bunch of different playthroughs of this. They all have different things have happened in them. And once episode 4 comes out, I imagine we'll be playing Scarlet Hollow a little bit more frequently than we have been um, so that we can play the next chapter and find out. We are going to start chap uh, episode 4 with our initial run so that that's the most like what I would be doing if this was happening to me. So Kenai Street Smart, I picked uh, Kenai or Street Smart and I think you, I, I picked one of the traits, chat at the time picked the other one. Um, so we're going to do that one first because that's, that's the original run. That's, that's the, uh, the untainted run where I, I don't know what's going to happen yet. So that one will hopefully be soon because that game's coming out. The, the episode I think is coming out before the end of this month, but we'll find out. So thank you guys so much for joining. I'm going to see if there's anybody still streaming that we might be able to raid, but yeah, what... <laughs> What do you think was the most creepy about this, this one, this episode? It's the true happy run. This is the true happy run? No, this is the true uh, mean Scarlet Girls run. That's what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, he was here earlier. We're going to go raid our good friend Slowpoke316 because reasons. Um, he's playing, uh, what is he playing? Alice Madness Reigns. So he's playing Octoberish games, so I think there's a little spookiness with this. It's a retro game and it is chat interactive, which you guys seem to be very chatty today, so we're gonna go over and raid our good friend Slowpoke. I'm gonna go start the raid. But yeah, the scene with the dog is major creepy. <laughs> yeah, with with the dog mayor. <laughs> Yes, the dog mayor. Nobody wants to see a dog mayor. That's true. Alright, let's save the game. Where is this one? I think it's here. Yep. Cool. So we got all of our stuff. We're going to go ahead and raid, raid Slowpoke. <laughs> it's going to be a happy raid, which means we're just going to spam the chat with axe emojis if you're subbed. If you are not subbed, feel free to, um, whoops, I unrated. Dang it. Come on, Twitch. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna go raid Slowpoke and um, use as many axe emojis as possible to uh, say hello. All that good stuff. Get to hear his, uh, he's got custom sound alerts for when raids come in. But thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you FaZe and Jess for gifting each other subs. Thank you Cabs, Cake, and Slowpoke for joining. We're gonna head on over there and uh, we will see you next time. Bye, guys.